<laughs> Welcome to the Blessed Mindset Matters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson, and we are broadcasting on WYTV7 Community Broadcasters Network. If you have been enjoying the Blessed podcast, if you have felt like you've been empowered, encouraged, or educated in some way, I need you to go to www.wytv7.org, hit the green donate button. Every little bit helps to keep us on the air, doing what we do, and we feed families and we send kids to college. So go do that for me. Thank you. All right. So we're still in the month of March and we're talking about home ownership. Today, we're going to do a little something different. We're not just talking about the home markets in an area. We are talking about mortgages. And with me, I have my friend, Kanisha Forrest. She is a licensed mortgage loan originator. She's also a California real estate agent. But Kanisha, tell them where else do you do mortgages? What other states, just in case somebody's listening and they need somebody to talk to? Okay. I am currently licensed, like Raquel said, in California, of course, as well as Iowa, state of Iowa, which you'd be surprised. And I'm working on Florida right now and more states to come but I'm in the process of getting my approval for Florida as we speak and um, Iowa is already approved. All right. So that's really interesting that you, Iowa, <laughs> you know, and it's so funny because I was just watching the, um, the story about the football player, uh, the Rams, you know, football player, they have a, uh, a quarterback, they have a story and he was in Iowa. So I, yeah. So I was just like, Oh, Iowa is so weird. <laughs> um, anyway, but let's just get to it because I was reading an article this morning that Wells Fargo was making it very difficult for people to uh, refinance their homes. I mean, not people, black people. That's what I'm talking about. They were making it. And, and these same people, you would think, oh, well, maybe they just didn't have the stuff. But other people, you know, they approved them. Wells Fargo was the only one that really didn't approve the big numbers of black people trying to refinance. So I just want to kind of talk about that because as black people, you know, we always feel like stuff is stacked against us. But and when we hear those kind of stories, it's like, oh, man, well, it's just not going to happen for us. But, you know, please help the people out. There's more than just Wells Fargo and other popular name banks, right? Absolutely. Well, first of all, there's not only different banks other than Wells Fargo, because Wells Fargo is out here, Wells Fargo in, you know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, there's, if, if you want to go the bank route, there's so many other actual financial institutions, deposit institutions is what, you know, they're also referred to where they're lending money based on the deposits that they have um, on their books. But other than that, there are non-bank lenders and mortgage bankers that they're not lending their money per se but they can institute and facilitate an actual mortgage loan mm -hmm. from start to finish for a homeowner um there's so many there's private lenders there's hard money lenders there's so many different ways to be able to um, take part in the home ownership process and you're just not limited to banks and a lot of times our um, people's scenarios don't necessarily fit into the banking scenario because again because because financial institutions are lending their depositors money or loaning based on their deposits on on their books they have to abide by the rules whether it's a bank it would be the FDIC if it is the a credit union they have to abide by the NCUA National Credit Union Association so there's strict guidelines that they have to follow because that that is someone's literal money that they are are lending against. Um, but you have other programs and other institutions that can um, facilitate and be able to accommodate people that have kind of a non-traditional or an outside of the normal, you know, W two income, two income, uh, regular worker, you know regular employee. There are so many different programs out there for others 
So you're just not limited to a bank situation. Right. And and so I really wanted to for that to get out so people are not discouraged. Mm-hmm. So let's just talk about the types of loans. So let's just say for first time or not even first time or when you're trying to buy a home, because, mm-hmm. you know, most people think about conventional loans where you have to put 20 percent down. Mm-hmm. Well, and then I found out that you don't have to put 20 percent down on a conventional loan. So oh. let's start with conventional loans and then let's go to the next one. So okay. what do you have to do for a conventional loan? Well, for a conventional loan, you mentioned 20% down. While that is ideal because you put yourself in a great equity position and you put yourself in a position to not have mortgage insurance when you're putting down 20%. But it is you don't have to do that. For conventional loans, the minimum down payment requirement currently is 3.5%. Some three percent for a conventional loan. Yes, three for a conventional loan. Mm-hmm. Wow. And there are also other programs. There's a Home Ready program for Fannie Mae. There's Home Possible. Those are um, designated for certain areas and also income limits. There's income restrictions on those. Um, but still, depending on your county, like we're in Los Angeles County. Los Angeles County is a high cost county, so our loan limits are astronomical uh so because based on the pricing here so a lot of the counties in california and on the west coast do have high loan limits so a conventional loan 3.5 percent is very very doable for people so yes. yeah right yeah. of course of course the more you put down the better but you you right. don't don't be discouraged if you don't have 20 percent. you can literally buy in with 3.5 and then there's the FHA. So what's, I mean, like, why would somebody go with FHA and not conventional if it's the 3.5? So explain Well, that. FHA also. So FHA is backed by the Federal Housing Administration, and the money is not coming from the Federal Housing Administration. What it is doing, the lenders using the FHA program will still lend based on their the guidelines, but the... Um, FHA will guarantee this loan as long as the person meets the FHA guidelines. FHA says, all right, we'll go ahead and back or vouch for this person. They've met our guidelines. They've met your guidelines. We'll go ahead and, 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 and back them. And what that means is they will allow sometimes a little bit more credit leniency. You can have a little lower credit score with FHA. If you have some blemishes on your credit report, um, you know, up to a certain amount collections, they'll allow if you have some credit events, some different things take place over, you know, in your life because they happen to all of us. FHA is a lot more lenient um, in that regard to where you can get, you can still take advantage of home ownership that way. That's pretty interesting. So when you talk, because you talked about the um, mortgage, the uh, mortgage insurance. So Mm -hmm. you get with that with both of them if you pay under 20%. But you usually don't go FHA route if you have 20% um, down or can you still go the FHA route? You can still go that way. pay the 20% down. Yes, you still can. You Nobody's going to refuse taking your down payment. Trust (laughs) me. (laughs) Now, now, if you pay the great position. So if you pay the 20%, in an FHA loan, do you still have that mortgage insurance? Now, that is a good question because so few people do that. <laughs> right. And um, by the time you, by the time you do it, there's tip, there's kind of no need for it. So, because you, if you got 20%, you can go conventional. Typically rates are better. Mm-hmm. Um, but FHA right now, FHA has some good rates. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you if you have that much, you can go pretty much whatever way you want to go. You don't have to okay. do that. Okay, so now, I believe you, you would still have the upfront mortgage insurance. I can double check on that one because again, we don't, you know, we don't run into that detail. often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right. Okay, mm-hmm. so if you were giving advice to everybody, like the top three things that you would share with people about um, getting ready for a mortgage? Like, you know, to prepare your, what information do they need? Like, what are some of the things that you kind of typically share with people when they are trying to decide 
or when they want to buy a house okay. or even refinance so and this is this is going to be a little bit um contrary to what's often said in in our industry mortgage side as well as especially real estate you know we all want as real estate agents we want everybody to be able to participate in the american dream right everybody deserves to own a home they if they so choose well my thing is first of all i got into real estate kind of through the back door i got into real estate through mortgage and when i'm dealing with my or servicing my real estate clients i'm always thinking as a loan officer going in i want my client to be prepared and be taken care of not just for that home purchase but throughout their lifetime they're going to want to refinance they're going to want to do this that, and the other so the things that i work with clients to get them ready with is number one credit ready get credit ready and i don't mean just dispute a whole bunch of things you know go through a credit repair program those things are great and they they you can be successful in getting into a home by utilizing those things but there's so much more than just going through a credit repair process and having items removed you want to make sure your credit is sound you don't want to if you can help it if you're not under the gun and you don't have to buy right now some people are like i gotta buy right now my landlord is selling this that and the other then you got to do what you got to do but if you if you have the time to invest and actually make sure your credit is sound make sure you have the right amount of trade lines make sure they're reporting properly accurately making sure your credit is clean um any old addresses any inaccuracies all of that stuff gone and the health of each trade line you want to make sure that you take care of anything, any late, um, and allow that time to pass. Your credit score is based on the last 24 months of activity. So if you've had any negatives in 24 months, it typically will, it won't knock you out of the box because like I said, FHA and also VA loans will, they have some leniency there, but it affects your pricing when you have those items. It affects your, um, the hoops that you have to jump through. You know, the home buying process is the most major process that you'll undertake in your life, most of us. And mm -hmm. it's already stressful enough with things that could come up with the property, things that, that normally come up in the transaction in the first place. Right. So you want to make it as easy on yourself as possible. Credit, first and foremost, credit, because while you can qualify to um, get into or qualify for a mortgage with a 580 credit score, you have to have a little bit more money down payment when you do that. Or, the, you know, but the lower your credit score, the more it's going to cost you. Right, right, right. You still can get a good interest rate, but the amount of points that you'll have to pay in order to get a decent interest rate that you can, you know, afford to pay. Mm -hmm. you know that's where it comes into into play so the first one okay. credit ready second one while you're also working on your credit and you're you know taking your time getting prepared build up as much savings as you can mm -hmm. there are many down payment assistance programs yes but as we've seen in this market a market like this one seller's market everything is fast paced you're competing with people who do have you know hundred thousand dollars to offer over asking or they yeah. have all cash you're competing so when you know your offers come in and you have a down payment assistance program in there sometimes lenders won't even take them mm. um, some lit because not every not every lender takes them also okay. with down payment assistance programs you might have been able to qualify for this fha loan with a 620 but sometimes the down payment assistance programs want you to have a 640 minimum Mm -hmm. So they they have their own requirements too, and then you have other city programs and county programs and even state or nationwide programs that all may be good, but you want to go in as strong as possible. You want your mortgage profile, your loan profile, to be as strong as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. Credit and your savings, your um, okay. your assets definitely, mm -hmm. and then the third thing I would say patience 
Mm, that's a good one. Yes. yes. Mm. Patience and trust your professional. Patience, mm. trust your professional, follow direction. If you, mm. in the very beginning, when you interview and you sit down with your loan professional and your real estate professional, if you're not feeling the vibe, you don't have to stick with them. You don't have to. Make okay. sure you choose the right uh, professional that's going to work for you, that speaks to your needs, not theirs. Mm -hmm. That can fully educate you, that has nothing to hide from you, can explain the process in a way that you can understand. Then have patience with the process and ask as many questions as you need to because you're paying. You know what I mean? This is your, right. this is your purchase or this is your refinance. So ask all the questions that you need to ask so you're clear on where your money is going. That's, right. that's definitely what I would, I would suggest. That was awesome, especially that last one, patience. But I want to go back to the second one about finance, you know, having your money in order, because that is huge. But if you are in a time crunch and you need to have some money, there are there are lenders who will allow you, and I'm, I, I'm assuming because my lender did, would allow you to get gifts. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't be loans because then that's going to take but gifts. So mm -hmm. a parent can gift you um 10 percent or half of the money that you need for your down payment absolutely and, and i actually because i say my house was a um it was a it was a village because you know they say it takes a village to raise a child yes well maybe i'm still being raised because i still got a village surrounding me okay <laughs> I, needed, I needed to come up with thirty thousand dollars i had zero savings so that's why when she said have some money in the bank she is not lying mm -hmm. but I, this is what God told me, go get it. And it was like, okay, well, God, I, I only had no money, like $30,000. So you know what I did? I was like, well, if I come up with 15, I'm showing people that I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And then, so I had three family members who love me enough to say, you know what? I got five on it. And that's how I was able to come up with my 30,000 to get into the home that I did. So, you know what? That's why it really does pay it does. to be a good person and to treat people right because yeah, you never know who you're going to need or if you're going to need somebody to help you move to the next level. And absolutely. God, that's why God causes us to have relationships because of this, is because we don't have to have it all for ourselves. We mm -hmm. do not have to have it all for ourselves to get things. God put people in our lives. But if you nasty to people, if you dishonest with people, if you borrow money and not paying it back, if you asking for money and you don't really need it and then you showing them you going on trips, mm -hmm. they're not going for it. They're not right. going to help you. So you have to do the right thing, be a good person. And you know what? If God put it in your heart to get a house, it can happen. Make sure you have patience and get the right professionals around you. That's right. That's right. And you meant you brought up something really well. A great point is, you know, the people around you for that gift. What was key there is you came up with 15,000 first. Mm -hmm. You put the energy out there of you're not just sitting back, not doing your due diligence, making sure just, right. you know, I'm not going to save. I'm not going to try to put into this. I'm going to let somebody give me. You right. people will help you if you see what's the saying? God helps those who help themselves. God love God bless the child has got his own you know so you you do the work I don't care if it's I'm committed I'm gonna save a hundred dollars a month I'm gonna save fifty dollars a month you building that momentum you building that energy that puts you in the right energy space and then the people that come your way will match that you'll be put in front of people they'll see what you're doing you and you could be in casual conversation with somebody Oh, I'm saving for a house. Oh, you know what? I want to help you with that. You just never know who God is going to send your way or who you'll be attracted to. But you put the momentum in there first. You yeah. made the conscious decision that th this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to come up with this part. Period. And then the rest will come your way. So there, there, where there's a will, there is a way. And I know that's cliche, but it is literally the truth. If it you want really it, you can have it for sure. Yes, sure. it is literally the truth. And we usually go to commercial break and we come back, but I t promise Tanisha because she is so busy and I <laughs> really appreciate her for taking the time to talk with us today. So we're going to let her go. We're going to take a quick break and I'm going to come back to share with you guys what I'm doing this week in for
for the mommy con so stay with me so i can tell you more about mommy con we'll be right back are you ready to buy a new home or refinance a home Call Quentin Johnson at Homestar Financial. Homestar Financial offers competitive rates for home improvement, new construction, FHA, VA, conventional, and USDA loans. Take advantage of today's low interest rates by being a smart and prepared buyer. Get pre-approved today and find out just how much house you can afford. Call Quentin Johnson at Homestar Financial. 704-526-4007. Extension 50306. Homestar Financial makes home ownership a reality. In MLS 161685. Equal housing lender. We're back. Thank you for coming back. Um, I hope that you really enjoyed that. Um, our first half, Kanisha was awesome. I mean, that patience, that is huge. And finding somebody you really um, need to work with, that is huge. You know, that you really like to work with and that you feel comfortable, very important. But let me tell y'all what I'm doing this weekend. So um i am a speaker at the mommy con it's so awesome and she and jaquela she is the founder of the mommy con conference it's a virtual conference and it's going to be held uh thursday friday saturday and she called it the mommy con because she, jaquela says that often women get conned out of their identity when they become mothers and, and she was so right because I remember me telling people that instead of when introducing myself as Lorenz's mom, not Ray Kell, but Lorenz's mom. Like I was Ray Kell for 24 years before I became Lorenz's mom. But that is like, I basically, my identity was so wrapped up into being my son's mother. Now, of course we love our children, We you know, but we do have to be careful about losing our own identity especially moms that take off from the workplace to stay at home to care for their kids, which is a very great thing to do, but it's really difficult to, you know, keep hold on to your identity in those situations. But here's the thing, most of us, we probably need to stop putting our identity in our titles as far as what we do. Because that's not really who we are, that's just what we do. But that's what, you know, so it's like, I'm a mother, I, I, I express as a mother because that's what I'm doing. I, you know, but I'm, I express as a daughter, as a as a sister, as a friend, as a lawyer, as a podcast host, as an author. All these things I do and I express myself as that. But I am a spiritual being. I am a child of God, and I'm just here to, you know, give good and receive good. You know, that's really my purpose in life. And then I do all those other things because they bring good to me and they bring good you know through me so it was really important that i participate in this and my topic i'm going to be talking about y'all probably already know what i'm talking about because i've been talking about focusing on family and i've been talking about money and i really want to um impress upon mothers especially how important it is to not only invest in their children's future but to invest in their own future you know, it's like I said, mothers who work from um, stay at home and take care of their kids, they're not putting money in, in, in a retirement fund at their jobs, right? But they still need to be preparing for retirement. They do. They still need to be preparing for retirement. And mothers who have jobs, you know, it's easy for us to say, well, no, I'm not going to put my money in that because I want to put money towards my child's college education or I need to put them in karate, I need to do this. So we, you know, there's all these things that we have to do and we don't put enough money into our retirement accounts. And let me tell you why I believe that those retirement accounts are vital. Because when we get older, we want to make sure that we are not going to become a burden on our children where they have to pay our rent buy our food now, now god knows i want i hope that my son would help take care of me if i needed him to but i don't want to have to need him to do you understand that is why i have to invest in my future you know when i'm no longer working did you know that there are so many um older people in poverty and most of those older people that are in poverty are women women need women make 
have less than 25%, about 25% less in retirement than men. And that's because we are out of the workforce a little bit longer. We have kids, we take off, we, you know, people get sick, we have to take off. When we're not working, we're not putting more money into the, you know, retirement. But we actually need 20% more than men because typically we live seven years longer than men do. Very important that women start to think about setting themselves up financially for the future. I'm not saying to feel like, oh, we, you know, you're going to, you have to do all this. You got to hoard all this money. That's not it at all. It's just preparing for your future because there is going to be a future. Praise God. There's going to be a future. You know what I mean? And we're going to live long, healthy lives because we're, you know, that's what our goal is to be healthy and meet our great grandchildren. We have to make sure that we put money aside for our futures. And then here's the other thing. Our kids are never gonna stop needing us. When your grandchild is ready to buy a home, you're gonna wanna give that child some money to help on their um, down payment, if not pay the whole thing. So you gotta have some because it's really important. And hear me when I say this, it's really important that we stop giving from our cup that we give from our overflow, especially our finances. If you don't have the overflow, you can't give anybody any finances because that cup is for you to take care of you and the things that you need to do. It's the overflow that we give into. So if you have the like 401ks from work, if you have pensions and all that, continue, save some more so you can have an overflow, so you can give your grandchild some money for college. So even if you, when they're in college and you can send a hundred dollars every month, Ooh, that would be nice. Right. So you can give me your overflow. We don't want you to give them a hundred dollars every month and you, you know, barely eating. So this is what I'm going to be talking about at the mommy con. I'm going to put in the link, um, where you can register for the mommy con, but you can go to the mommy the mommy con.com and register if you do slash speaker slash raquel then i get credit for it, but i just want all mothers out there listening to register for the mommy con i believe that you're going to get some great information not just from me but from all the speakers there's something everybody is talking about something different something that is going to encourage you to edify you to uplift you to help you to do this thing called motherhood well, I think I have had all my time today. I have enjoyed it. I got on my green because it's uh, St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day. And until next week, be blessed.